Hi, welcome to the second video in learning LLM series. In this video, we are going to understand this in a unique way. That is up to here, we are going to understand really, really well. And this is especially good for visual learners. Welcome to Techie Talks AI. I am Sri from Shogini. On this channel, we bring you hands-on demonstrations and insights into the latest tools and trends to help you get started with ease. Don't forget to subscribe and be a part of our journey into the future of technology. In the first video, we saw a high-level overview of how an input text will navigate through all these to predict the next word. Supposing here we have the input text. After it reaches here, it will be able to predict the next word. So in this video, we are going to see the uh, tokenization, token ID, embedding lookup, and then positional encoding quickly in a unique way. That is using Google Sheets. So this is a very quick short video. If you watch this video, tokenizing, token IDs, embedding, and positional encoding will be very clear. Okay, so here we have the input text, I love parrots. Okay, that is the input to the large language model. Do not worry about predicting the next token. Do not worry about training or inferencing. All those things we will see later. At this stage, know that an English sentence is entering our large language model. And I will share this link to the sheet for you to play with. Then we have the next sheet where the input text is converted into tokens or sub words. So I comes here as a token. Love comes here as a token. But there is a prefix capital G with a dot that indicates a space. So space love. So here the space and love becomes one token. Then here parrots got split into space par as one token and then rots is split into another token. So this input sentence splitting into tokens need not be a single alphabet, need not be a complete word. It can be a sub word as well. Okay. But every component in the in input sentence is split into some form of token. So this is called byte pair encoding in this example. Okay. So BP to break text into sub word units. For example, learning is fun. Learning is fun. This G indicates a space before the token. Clear? So, this step is clear. Converting the input text into tokens. Next is, for every such token, there is a unique number corresponding to it. That is, ROTS will always be this number. Capital I will always be uh, number 40 in this encoding. Okay, so I am also giving the code here to compute this. Okay, GPT-2 tokenizer from pre-train, GPT-2. And first we get the input IDs by passing the sentence. And then from the input IDs, we are also getting the tokens. Okay, so this sheet is clear where we are converting the input sentence into tokens and then token ID. Next is for every token ID, Ignore the first line. That is only for reference. We don't carry that forward. For every token ID, depending on the model's dimension, a vector gets added. And in, this is GPT-2 example. So here, dimension 0 to 767. That is 768 numbers get attached to each token. So every token will have a long sequence of numbers. Now this adds semantic meaning to those tokens. So always a token ID 40 will have this sequence of numbers. Always token ID 1842 corresponds to space love. 
will have this embedding vector. So every token ID will have an embedding vector. From this point onwards, we will leave the token ID behind. We will leave the tokens behind. We only carry forward the embedding for each of those tokens. And now we have added meaning to those individual tokens. This is clear. So this part is clear. On the right side, I am giving the calculation and the code. So how torch.nn embedding tokenizer dot vocab size and we are creating the embedding. So you, you have a visual guide to see the dimensions attached to each of those tokens. So here we have added the meaning to each of those words. But individual meanings also depend on the position where the words appear. I don't need to explain that. We all know that, right? Position of a word will also alter its meaning. So we need to somehow encode this embedding with the position. We need to add it in such a way that it does not distort the meaning. Let me repeat. We have already added vectors for each of those tokens and these vectors form meaning. So these vectors are semantically meaningful. So if you add any number to this, you should not alter the vector's meaning. The researchers have found that if you add a sinusoidal oscillating pattern, then the distortion occurring to these embeddings is minimal. And if you add sine and cos wave to it, then we will also correctly indicate the position, whether it is before or after. So the direction and the position both will get gently included in the embedding. Okay, now next tab I am showing that. So here for each of those input token we have the token IDs, correct? It, then in the previous sheet we saw for each of those token ID we added embedding which are 768 long vectors. Now you agree that this 40 position is 0 and this 1842 position is 1 in the sequence, then 1582's position is 2, then this ROTS position is 3. So the, here 0, 1, 2, 3 indicates the position of that token in the input sequence. Clear? But we cannot use it as it is. So for that what we are going to do is, for each of those positions, we are applying a formula like this. First dimension, we are adding sine. Next dimension, we are adding cos. It goes on, sine, cos, sine, cos, moves like this. So, P is the position, I is the dimension index, and D is the total embedding dimension. So, when that is computed, you will see that on the embedding for the first word, it will always be 0, 1, 0, 1, like that. Sine 0, 0, cos 0, 1. So it goes on like this. And the second position onwards, the values change like this. So for this embedding value, we will add this 0, 1, 0, 1 to it. Then for the second embedding value, 1, 8, 4, 2. For this vector, we will add the second position, these ones. And the thing is, this computation will always be pre-calculated. So it can be readily fetched. So depending on the position and the embedding dimension. So here is the formula and here I have created a sample calculation. So if you take position 0 and dimension 0, you will notice that you get, for, for the sign we get 0. And for cos, we get 1. For position 1, we get this 8414. See here, 8414. And then, I mean, 0 0.8414 and cos 0 0.54. See here, 0 0.8414 cos. Just referring to this sheet will give you the clarity that you need to understand how the positional encoding is computed. And then the last sheet, we add the positional encoding value 
to the embedding value. So in the final sheet, we have the combined value. So we just take this example for the token ID 40. We have the combined value which is minus 0796. If you look at the embedding, you will notice that the embedding for the dimension 0 is minus 0796 and position for dimension 0 is 0. So adding both, we get this value. Take the case of uh, 1842 token ID. The combined value is 0 0.9171. Positional encoding value is 0 0.8414. And embedding is 0 0.075. Adding that, you get this. I am giving the computation here. So this is how we get the combined value, where we get the embedded tensor plus the positional encoding tensor and then we get the combined value for each of those tokens. So uh, from this stage, we leave the token ID, we leave the tokens, we move forward only with this positively encode, encoded vector or the tensor. The whole attention mechanism gets this as the input. Last tab, I am giving some URLs which are very handy. If you are studying attention mechanism, remember to use this Google Sheets, which is a unique way of understanding uh, the numbers behind uh, these uh, input sequence. So that is it for this video. See you in the next video where we go deeper into the attention mechanism. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and give your valuable comments. Bye-bye.